I say a whole lot without saying a whole lot. No, I said I won't be doing no more posting for a while, but fuck it, man. Do y'all realize that what was supposed to happen before 19 hit us? And you know what 19 is? I ain't got to spell it out here. Look at the time frame and how we were supposed to stay in the house. And be weary and keep your eyes on your people who went and got their jab. Because if you don't know, Trump, he blew the doors off everything. A lot of us don't really like Trump and all that, but once you figure out what the fuck he found out, <laughs> and why he went about things the way he went about them, man was trying to fucking help us, bro. He was trying to fucking help us the whole time. There was a mass invasion event that was supposed to happen. And a lot of you heard about Agenda 21 for the longest time. Yeah. They were supposed to give motherfuckers up in the droves. I'm going to say it like that because I can't, I can't say too much. I'm not to get off here, man. Like I said, they've been tri triangulating on me. Helicopters fly over daily. And I'm talking about heavy, low, low flying over. So at the end of the day, man, you ain't got to believe. I'm finna go to Telegram here in a little bit. I'm going to drop part two of the Orion group because the graphic nature. Once y'all see the bodies, that's, I can't tell you more than what I'm telling you now. If you see them bodies and you don't get an understanding, understanding, understanding of what the fuck is going on. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to burn a fire in a lot of people. It's going to make a lot of people angry. Once they figure out, they can like, man, fuck this technology, fuck these phones. If we had to go through all that just to get what we got now, at the expense and the cost of our people, fuck this technology. Straight like that. But you'll get an understanding once you see. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. A lot of people aren't. It's, it ain't for the faint of heart. That's all I'm going to tell you. If you got a type of mind where, it's gonna, where you feel like it's going to break you, I advise you don't go see it. Stay in the dark until something else happens and one of yours go missing or somebody else you know go missing. Or you see other people go missing. Stay in the dark. That's all I can tell you. I'm here to do one job and one job only. And that's all I'm doing. I think the biggest uh, revelation by far is the evidence that there is a clandestine and illegal operation uh, that has hidden and taken, stolen from humanity the solutions to the biggest problems we're facing and I think these uh, you know five whistleblowers who come forward uh, are given evidence of their little involvement what they saw but I think the bigger picture is uh, the fact that these technologies are real and it means that we can have as this extraterrestrial said to Colonel Corso when he had a meeting back in the 50s at White Sands. And the ET, the, 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 the colonel said, when the ET said, will you help us with this, you know, with, you know, and, and the, the colonel said, what's in it for me? Very brusque, and he admits he was a sort of arrogant, brusque Air Force colonel. And the extraterrestrial said, a new world, if you can take it. So y'all remember this video I made a couple of months ago saying that I've been in room with CEOs and higher ups of companies who think exactly like this man? Well, guess what I found out over the weekend? So if some of y'all know, I've been working for myself for the past two years, so I haven't really been looking at the job market, but a higher up at a company that I know personally told me something interesting that you guys might want to know. Have some of y'all been going to websites like Indeed or any other job boards and applying for jobs? And I don't mean going there and putting in about one or two applications. I mean, you people have been putting in like 300 to 400 applications and it's been six months and you still haven't heard back from a job, even though you have an updated and good resume. I'm here to let y'all know I heard directly from a source that that is not an incident. That shit is being done on purpose. It's a retaliation tactic that these jobs are using to try to keep people stuck at their job because they know our generation will quit a job in a heart.
I'm going to do a more detailed video once I talk to some more people in the industry and do the proper research. But if you haven't been able to find a job in the past eight to 10 months, just know that it is not your fault. It is being done on purpose. And y'all make sure to follow me for more videos like this. This is on topic, but off topic at the same time. The guy in the beginning, he was speaking from a CEO's standpoint. And he's really talking to corporate people who work corporate. Those are typically good jobs, and those 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 are high paying jobs, right? But what they don't tell you is that, and we've seen it in movies, millions and millions of times, and they joke upon it. But but what they don't tell you about those corporate jobs is, most people that work corporate jobs get treated like crap by CEOs like him. And the reason why they don't treat the people on the that's working, the reason why they don't teach the floor, the reason why they don't treat the floor associates that way is because they know once they leave, it's nothing. It, there's nothing. They know that these corporate workers aren't going to leave their jobs just like that because it pays too well. And they have to go through so much to get another job and most ceos of one company is connected to another ceo so yeah is it really worth being working corporate for a company when you get treated like crap when you can make that same amount of money possibly starting your own business i don't know y'all y'all tell me what y'all think close and then it blew up and it flew away before the shrapnel won't even hit it uh and they can build it any size and if they can make it that fly they could make a round ball fly. They could make a, a dinner plate fly. So if they could make that thing fly that shape, that don't look aerodynamic to me. But look at the jets. That's a steady, but you every once in a while get this pulsation. But look at the twists. And they can use any combination of jets. And the technology of that is incredible. I mean, seeing as though what we have or what we know about the drones and they call these multiple kill beer not single kill multiple kill there's a bigger one now these make noise but you can imagine that anything with more sufficient technology they could make the noise uh go away but that thing's just scary to see a, a flock of them coming down the street I'm sure people would run in a hurry, but I just wanted to show what this is. Uh, I, I don't know if a lot of people knows about them. You know, it makes you wonder, right? If they're planning a, in an attack on their own people, it kind of makes you wonder what did they, who did they create all of these weapons of mass destruction for? Was it really for the other countries or was it for their own people? Because that right there, you see something like that coming towards you and can move at the at the rate that it moves. And you talking about shooting it with a gun? Nah. Let me explain something to you. These people today don't know what a strike is. When my men hit the streets from Maine to Texas, every single port a lockdown. You know what's going to happen? I'll tell you. First week, be all over the news every night, boom, boom. Second week, guys who sell cars can't sell cars because the cars ain't coming in off the ships. They get laid off. Third week, malls start closing down. They can't get the goods from China. They can't sell clothes. They can't do this. Everything in the United States comes on a ship. They go out of business. Construction workers get laid off because the materials aren't coming in. The steel's not coming in. The lumber's not coming in. They lose their job. Everybody's hating the longshoremen now because now they realize how important our jobs are. Now I have the president screaming at me. I'm putting a Taff Hartley on you. Go ahead. Taff Hartley means I have to go back to work for 90 days. That's a cooling off period. Do you think when I go back for 90 days, those men are going to go to work on that pier? It's going to cost the money, the company's money to pay their salaries. Well, they go went from 30 moves an hour, maybe to eight. They're going to be like this. 
Who's going to win here in the long run? You're better off sitting down and let's get a contract and let's move on with this world. And in today's world, I recorded this video Monday the 30th. So the strike literally starts tomorrow, right? But the main thing that really stuck out to me about the strike is, yeah, they're fighting for wages, but they don't want automation. Because if automation comes in, then their jobs are literally going down the drain, right? That literally means that whether or not they come to an agreement on this contract, if they move automation in, they don't even need them. So you're striking for nothing. You're striking for nothing. They were going to replace you with automation anyway. They just needed time. They just needed time. So they were going to allow you to keep your jobs until they brought automation in. But you found out about it, so you striked. This is going to be bad. We're less than 24 hours out from the potential port strike. Here's what you need to know. I'm going to move my head so you can see. You can pause this, screenshot it, whatever. Here are the ports that are going to be affected. But tonight at 12.01 is when the strike will take place. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and the shelves are going to be bare at stores. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and not be able to find food or medicine or clothing, reason, all that stuff. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen overnight. However, experts say for one day of a port closure, creates a five to 10 day backlog. It's already said that cruise lines, military and medical will not be affected. One of the first things that you're gonna realize are not on the shelves anymore, bananas. Then I also saw grapes, uh, citrus, other fresh fruits. Now here's the bad news. In the last video I made, a lot of people said, okay, well, they'll just get their other ways. They'll just reroute to the West Coast. That equals time. What does time equal? Money. These companies are not trying to shell out all of this extra money, although they haven't. And unfortunately, as of last night, the railways have already said they're not going to be taking on refrigerated goods. As I've said in every other video, I'm not trying to fear monger. I'm trying to empower you to know what's going on. There are people I've talked to and they still have no idea this is happening and it's going to happen tonight. And it's crazy because I, I forgot. I actually forgot. They're graveyard shift workers that are actually going to start the strike off tonight. Yeah, this could get real ugly. The fact that they took down J. Cole's She Knows video and Kanye West's famous video tells us that they can clean anything they want off of the internet. And after 238 million views, it's not allowed in our country anymore. What? What is this CSAC exactly? Oh, it's the European Stage Authors and Composers Organization. And guess who they're owned by? Blackstone. And if you don't think there's a reason behind them taking this song down, or that there's a reason why he specifically mentioned specific names, or why he said he knows that he'll see them again one day when he dies. Then you haven't paid attention to hip hop ever in your life because she knows, she knows, she knows. You can believe that. They all knew what was happening and they were a part of it. And if you didn't know that J. Cole sampled this song from the group called The Cult and what they recorded on that song you haven't been paying attention all right gangsters it's came to this moment right here donald trump's idea to stop crime is to allow it for one day and i quote one really violent day one rough hour and i mean real rough no diddy Bro, do you know what the fuck finna happen in places like Chicago, nigga? Memphis, bro? Jacksonville, nigga? Bro, Saginaw. I'ma keep it a bean, though. I feel like this is a good-ass idea, bro. I don't need motherfuckers calling me evil in the comments. Really just put yourself in the shoes right now. If you had one hour, bro, where you can do anything without getting in trouble. Like, imagine you driving, bro, and a nigga just cut you off in the lane, bro. You can legit hit this nigga car or pull him out of his shit or something, bro. No, no, no skin off your nose. I'm with it, Trump. Yeah, that would change the game a, a whole lot. And you have to see it in a mindset. 
let's let's put it like this. Let me try to help people understand. So if you got a lot of people out here committing crimes, right, and nobody fights back about it, Trump allows this one day, one hour, where you can do all the things that those criminals have done to them for an hour. And this is bottled up rage coming from the people. After that hour is over with, people are going to be exhausted. Nobody's going to want to commit any more crime because they're going to see people at their breaking points. Oh my God, that's Douglas Dan, guys. What's that? Full capacity. They say that it might break. Douglas Dan and Douglas Dan. Look at the river over here. Douglas Dan is about to break. Oh my God, it is like maybe five feet away from going over the top. Those are the locks. The locks are completely open. The water, oh my God, it's so bad. They can't open the locks anymore. They're, they're completely maxed out. This is really, really bad. Look at this right next to the dam. I hope this eagle is watching out for us. Hey buddy. Boy, he's big. Bald eagle overlooking the flooding Douglas Lake where the dam's about to break. Give us protection, my man. Yo, this is the parking lot at the downside of Douglas Dam. Look at this. Oh, my Lord. Whoa. Jeez, man. Um, I don't, I'm not sure about whether it's going to break. It may break, but if they got all of the valves open like that, they mean they are releasing the pressure, right? So, and, and, and I mean, if it was really, really that bad, it would be overflowing over the top of it, correct? I don't think it's going to break. Theoretically, I think it's possible that we could die at any time and our consciousness just gets transferred to a copycat alternate dimension that's very just slightly different from the one you were just in. And if you've ever had this experience, please watch this. I'm actually thinking that I did die a few times. One time I didn't watch the car in front of me. I had to swerve in the middle of the traffic going between two cars. I don't remember the rest, but we were fine. And like everything after that was sort of different, like surreal. And this has happened multiple times throughout my life where I think I probably died. And then the next day, like the vibe is just different. I feel like there's multiverses. I feel like, I feel like when you die in one dimension, you end up in another in the same body. Like my wife and kids in a past dimension are like mourning the loss of me, but I'm still fucking here. Does that make sense? Makes all the sense in the world. I talk about that a lot on this channel though. Have I not? Like literally, I had that same experience again last week where I was driving i can't remember the street i was on but i was it was high speed road it was between a 50 mile per hour road or a 60 mile per hour road it could have at least it could have been the expressway or like i said a, or, or 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 a road where i was allowed to do 50 miles per hour now i was looking at my phone checking notifications from y'all and by the time i looked up the car was this close but then all of a sudden it just like the car weren't there anymore. And and ever since that point, and I'm starting to notice these things more and more. But like I said, when I looked up, it the car was right here, right here. And then next thing you know, now I'm sure, yes, cars are still around me, not super close, but it's like a big open space now. You know what I mean? Like, and it's just wind. And I, I, and I said to myself, why do I feel like I just died? Ever since then, the energy in my home, the, the energy with people that I deal with has been different. Not a whole lot different, but slightly different. So I believe it. Have y'all ever had that happen to you? If you're not ready for a mind.
then keep scrolling because it's about to get a little bit out there. There's this theory in quantum physics that says we might all actually be immortal. Hear me out. You know Schrodinger's cat where there is a cat in the box with a vat of poison and until someone opens the box, the cat is both alive and dead in a state of quantum superposition. Well, in 1957, Hugh Everett proposed the many worlds interpretation where in this case, once you open the box, there's a timeline where the cat lives and a timeline where the cat dies, but they don't split until the box is open. This would mean there is an infinite amount of realities branching off every single day into a multiverse. And then there's you. Have you ever walked down the street and felt like you almost got hit by a car? Well, quantum immortality says that there's a good chance in one timeline you did, but every time you get knocked off, your consciousness immediately travels into a timeline where you didn't. This continues on and on for infinity with your conscious mind always finding a way into a timeline where you made it. This would literally mean death does not exist because you cannot experience it if you're not conscious of it. Period. Your consciousness leaves when so-called death happens. Like, uh-uh, we going over here and we're going to start over where we left off. I found some people that were just straight up actors to play this role of a gangster. And one of those people is obviously Tupac. So let's just watch this footage. You may forget this. Tupac was an actor, and I'm pretty sure he was not a heterosexual actor either on the basis of this clip. Take a listen. I'm most like my mom because I'm arrogant, totally arrogant. I agree. I have to say it. Like at work, I, I can't hold a job. I, I just quit my job today, actually, because I wanted to come and do this. And they wouldn't let me. And I felt like it was important and it was more important than serving pizza. And we had enough people. So I felt like since I'm an actor, they should understand. They should have let me do it, but they didn't. And then I had a cold. So they were making me work in a freezer. And I'm, I'm really not one to be disrespected. And I felt like that was disrespectful because I asked to go, you know. So I quit and he told me I couldn't quit. And that even made me hyper, I'm arrogant. So when he told me I couldn't quit and we had all these customers, I chose that time to jump on a soapbox, grab my leather jacket, light a cigarette in front of him, smoke and leave in the middle of a rush. So that was natural, that's arrogance at the top. That's what I think I'm most like my mother. And she likes it, she'll see it in me and know it. And we clash a lot because I'm arrogant, she's arrogant. And, and you should see us when we get in our little attitude moves. I'm just saying it's a lot of hand movements for an eventual thug life gangster, okay? And like I said, he was in school for performing arts. Yeah, they were looking for people. That's him being cast. And it's very obvious to me that gangster rap was some sort of an operation and remains today. All the, the trap music, all the people that are getting signed, I don't say this with any ill will in my heart. I'm just not going to be convinced that, like, you know, Sexy Red is the number one talent that black america can offer that she gets a record deal and that they couldn't find someone else that was producing mu music of a higher caliber again not a shot at her ah uh, that kind of makes sense though so that would mean tupac was actually the cia and the cia came up with this gangster rap thing to def to destroy the youth because they knew how influential it was on the youth remember how i said hurricanes are going to get worse this is just the start. Hurricane Helene went from a Cat 1 to a Cat 4 in the span of a day right before it hit Florida. And horrifyingly, that's not where most of the damage is. Western North Carolina and Eastern Tennessee are practically gone. Most of the towns in that area that are heavily reliant upon the roads to get supplies in, those roads have been washed away. The towns have been washed away. There are thousands of people without homes in an area that's not supposed to get hit by hurricanes. And that's not the scariest part. The scariest part is that Hurricane Helene was such a strong hurricane that it managed to sustain most of its mass and shape until it hit Lake fucking Erie. The remnants of the eye wall smacked Columbus, Ohio dead on and was an incredibly powerful storm by the time it hit. Increased ocean temperatures from global warming are 100% what made this storm so severe and what made it capable of sustaining itself over a good majority of America's landmass. That's something we can expect from this point on. Hurricanes that make it all the way to the Midwest before they dissipate. This isn't just, you know, a freak anomaly among hurricanes. No, this is what scientists have been telling us for decades is going to happen to hurricanes in the United States. 
They're gonna start getting stronger more often and they're gonna start hitting so often that the American South, particularly along the Atlantic Ocean and the Caribbean, are going to become uninhabitable simply because it will be impossible to keep the power grid up and running. It'll be impossible to keep housing in that area. It'll be impossible to build something that's no longer in a floodplain. This isn't just an environmental crisis. This is a humanitarian crisis that is going to get worse over time. The people affected by this are not the people who are telling you, oh, global warming's not real. Blah, blah, blah. These are just everyday people trying to live their lives. We don't have a century. We don't have decades. We have maybe four years before this shit is irreversible. Oh, but that can't happen here. It can happen anywhere. Yeah, that's that's true. I would never say it can't happen here in Memphis because we had two small hur hurricanes and it did some damage. I think the first one was Hurricane Elvis and then I, I forgot what the other one was. But it's, it's, it's all bleach, but yeah. And if he said, and if that's true, they're getting stronger. I know our after winds after hurricanes have hit in the Gulf are strong. Just imagine if they don't dissipate until they go past Tennessee. If I get in this river and I float down and I submerge my body, I can make it that much more difficult for a drone to spot me, especially as I go along the rocks and hide in there as I'm floating down. So we're gonna take a look through the thermal as I get into this river and I float for a little bit and have a good time. Now to be clear, uh, getting into a river floating down it for thermal camouflage is probably a last case scenario for me because there are going to be people on the river. There's a high chance of being spotted, but there are times you might have to. There are times when it might make sense. It's another tool for the toolbox. Don't assume this is what I am recommending. Drones are not going away. This is going to be a fact of warfare from here on out. If you think this is a fallacy, if you think this isn't real, simply look at any new altercation, any new war, any new conflict that is occurring. Drones are being heavily used. You need to understand them, you need to utilize them, and you need to understand how to evade them. Evasion of drones is, it comes down to soldiering. It comes down to the most basic soldiering. Keeping the overhead cover, keeping the camouflage on you, moving when you know you're able to, and being as careful as possible. You need to always assume that you're being watched. The difference between practicing these techniques to the utmost of your ability versus being lackadaisical about them. That's crazy that that's our reality. I said I'm not leaving here no more because I'm going to live in heaven. Yeah. You so say you're not going to be here no more, you're going to live in heaven? He said he's not going to be here anymore. He's going to live in heaven with Jesus. That's what he told me at first. Y'all ready? I'm ready. Let's go home. All the children of God, read the book of Romans, chapter 8, at verse 19 and 20. Now understand that the manifestation of the sons of God is about to happen. We don't know what day, but we're to be on watch because this is the season and this is the time. We're about to go home. Truly, in this world, it's about to go into tribulation, Jacob's trouble. And it's about to be the worst time period ever. As the book of Daniel chapter 12 or verse 1 tells us, and also the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 or verse 7 tells us. God bless. I just got a frequency on the radio and this shit is saying, hello, America. Hello, ma'am, can you hear me? Something can hear me through my fucking radio. Yes, hello, ma'am. Hello? Hello, ma'am. Who is this? Yeah. Oh, hell no. Let me get off. I just got a... What? Is, is that the aliens trying to contact us? 
why do they always contact people like this that are scared of them? Send me the radio waves. All this electronic stuff, you can't get through this frequency some kind of way and contact me. I will get the message and I will relay it. Send it to me. I want to know what's going on because it sounds like they fit to say we are a hundred light years out. Could you please tell the American people to prepare? Oh, no. I don't know. But she ran from the message. My God, she had one job. Three days ago, y'all agreed to give Ukraine $2.4 billion, right? But this is what you got for the people that's been affected by the hurricane. $2.4 billion package of security assistance. We, we, we gave, we're giving them all of the, all, everything that we have. We're on the ground ahead of time. So we're working hard. Thank you. Any more reports that the federal government's looking at because? No, we've given them. Y'all know I don't usually stop videos because they're short. But what in the hell is going on in this country where you can give another country $2.4 billion, but give us all that you have? He only wants to give us all that he has. It's people literally losing their homes in East Tennessee and North Carolina. And he wants to give us all that he has. Shit. What the? Oh, my God. Oh my God, we in trouble, y'all. Yeah, pre planned a significant amount of it, even though they didn't ask for it yet. Are you telling me the illegal immigrants can come into this country and receive financial assistance from the government? They receive uh, food stamps from the government. They receive health and benefits from the government. They receive housing for the government. You mean to tell me Ukraine can get $2.4 billion, but we got a natural disaster here in the Carolinas, Georgia. A lot of people have been affected by it. People have lost their homes, businesses, schools, all type of stuff. Even bridges have been washed away. Some cities they can't even get to because the bridges have been washed away. Some of these cities are only able to be accessed through air. And this is the response that you have? And y'all think the Democrats are about to get my vote. Come November, we all lost y'all. Goddamn mine. Y'all lost y'all mine. Everybody is getting taken care of but the American people. Now is the time to show the American people that you care about us and you giving Ukraine another 2.4 bill. Do Ukraine got some some, some type of a paperwork on us or something that we don't know about? Kind of makes me think, is this a way of God showing the people that's voting for Kamala, hey, you don't need to vote for her. Let me tear y'all ass up a little bit so y'all can see that you need to vote for Trump. Is that what it is? Look, nothing in the sky at all. Then all of a sudden, bam, what is that? Anybody tell me what that is? I'll tell you what it is. The World Galactic Federation that I didn't believe in at first, and now I believe in them because I just seen a radio frequency where it sounded like an alien was coming through to a woman, and she had one job, but she didn't finish the job. We're in the middle of the ocean on a ferry. Nothing around. What? Nothing around. No land. No nothing. I definitely wouldn't be out there on all that water and they coming in like that. I would need to be on some land so when they land, I could talk to them. Look here. If you see suits, shoot them all. If they got suits on, get them all. We just some regular people. I'm just saying. Okay, y'all, I think the Lord was trying to speak to me today about our nation. And you're going to want to stick around for this one. You guys know that I'm always preaching about how I believe America is mystery Babylon in the book of Revelation. How we're specifically mentioned in Bible prophecy as that great nation that falls before the beast rises. And you know, I've taught that for a long time. Well, today I had a customer come into my coffee shop. For those of you who don't know, I own a coffee shop that I run and operate. And today I had a customer come in that I don't know very well he comes in once in a while but we've never had any lengthy discussion and and not to be profiling people because we should never do that he doesn't seem like a conservative person to me but he apparently he is so he starts opening up to me about what he believes and he's talking to me about america and he specifically says to me i believe america is babylon and i believe america is going to fall and america is run by demons and i was totally shocked by this because this is not what i expected from this customer 
Uh, that's why you should never judge a book by its cover. But when he walked away, I was totally shocked. And I was sitting there chewing on what he said about our country, because it's what I always say. And I was stunned to hear him put it in the same words, right? As I'm thinking about what he just said, a picture falls off my wall that's been there for 10 years, been on the wall for 10 years, falls off the wall, bounces, hits a display of American flags that I have, and knocks them all over the ground. Literally symbolic of America falling as I'm thinking about what he just said. And I got a picture of it laying on the ground. And I was like, man, people aren't even gonna believe this happened. So I actually took the, the, the surveillance security footage from my copies up to show you guys like this stuff just falling. I mean, literally, and it, it's just like a picture that's about Jesus falls, bounces off, hits all the American flags and knocks them on the ground as I'm thinking about this man telling me that America's gonna fall. I took it as the Lord trying to send me a message that, that it's coming soon, that this nation's fall is coming soon, it's coming in quick, and take it or leave it. Believe it means something or don't, but to me, it was too much to be coincidence. It was like the Lord was saying, hey, there's some weight to what he just said, and I'm showing you that. I mean, I had, I mean, seriously, what are the chances? There's no chance of that happening. Well, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to leave it here. I had a dream the other night. No, that was last night. I had a dream, and the dream was in, the setting of the dream was in, in a civil war. We were in civil war time, and I had, um, boarded my home up and you know really had cut off any outside connections with a lot of people right but somehow the little kids i don't know which house this was what the house that i'm in now this was a was clearly another house but some young kids look like they used to be gang bangers or whatever came to my door and of course i went out armed and i was pointing the guns at them what do you want what do you need and they was like hey we don't want no trouble but we know that you have been surviving this for a while and we lost a few people and we just wanted to know if you could train us on how to shoot and how to you know shoot long range we know how to shoot close but we don't know how to shoot long range and i found that weird in the dream because i like to shoot at the gun range and i like to shoot long range i like scopes and stuff on my guns but uh yeah i collect guns but uh but with that being said, I was like, no, I don't want to, I don't want to train you. You got to go find your help somewhere else. Right. And, and as I was telling them that I was stepping off the porch. Now, mind you, right down the stream street, all this is in my dream, right down the street from where I was stepping off the porch, at, there was like a military camp set up. And I guess one of the military guys saw, saw us talking. It was a group of them and just one of me. So I guess they thought I was a part of the group some type of mercenary group or something and they shot towards me and hit me well grazed me in the head but in my dream it seemed as if they knocked out like a, a piece of skull sort of i don't really know but i, I want to say they grazed me. but it turned into an all-out gunfight right there so we started shooting back they were shooting back with me and i got one of the guys long range that shot me and then it switched from that to me in my backyard where i had set up this whole training obstacle course with you know uh targets and all these different things and i started training these guys but after i trained them i sent them on their way because i told them you bring too much heat now and and and, and, it, and it ended there the dream ended there now i say that to say this I don't know if that dream was a message from the most high telling me that this is the way it's going to be and America is going to fall to. But I believe a lot of people are receiving these messages in the ways by the way of dreams. And they say dreams aren't really dreams. We're connected to some sort of quantum reality in another universe where the fall has already happened and it's a distance it's a distant reality and, and and we're seeing it and we're getting the messages from there this is what i believe other people may believe that it's a message from god but then in my mind the most high in god is the the the, the great architect 
of the universe. So, I mean, you know, to do, do, I mean, take what you will from that. But all I'm saying is if, you, if everybody having these type of dreams, it's not a coincidence anymore, people. It's not a coincidence anymore. And it's time to start decoding these dreams before it's too late. And maybe you don't have the money to get yourself prepared for the, with food. But if you got you a few guns, and you learn how to shoot, and you learn how to salvage and save some, some am, ammunition, you can survive this. And it don't always have to be guns. Get you some knives. Learn how to use those. I just believe that if it is going to be that way, it won't be that way for long. But I think this is going to be a chance for the people to take their country back. Rightfully. Now, I can rant all day, but I won't do that. But like I always say, do what you will with that information. And hey, if you like what you saw, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on that notification bell so you know when I upload. Get in the description, follow all my social media. And remember, challenge the argument and not the person.